Senator Joe Manchin released an updated statement as to whether or not he'll be supporting his party's $3.5 trillion reconciliation package. And spoiler alert, he's not going to. So, all right, if he's not going to support that, then progressives need to torpedo the bipartisan infrastructure deal that he desperately wants passed, that his donors more specifically want passed. And I'm going to read you his updated statement, which is just incredibly stupid and bereft of common sense and just devoid of any understanding of what the country needs and wants currently. But before we get to that, I want to share an exchange that Joe Manchin had with the Bloomberg reporter where he actually got really testy because that reporter actually asked him about his conflicts of interest and corruption. And he did not like this at all. So as Frank Thorpe on Twitter writes, Manchin asked by Ari Natter whether an energy company he founded is a conflict of interest as he negotiates reconciliation. Manchin says, I've been in a blind trust for 20 years. I have no idea what they're doing. Ari says, you're still getting dividends. Manchin, you got a problem? He actually said this. Uh, Frank adds, more from Ari Natter. Read the energy company Manchin founded. Your son still owns it, doesn't he? Manchin says, you do best to change the subject. And if he doesn't change the subject, what are you going to do? Hit him? Are you a big tough guy? What a fucking petulant child Joe Manchin is. And this is clearly corruption. This is a violation of ethics laws because this is the same thing that Donald Trump was doing. He did not place his businesses in a blind trust. He still overall had control. He did delegate control to his sons, but the stipulation was that he can retake control at any time. That's not truly separating from that conflict of interest. And we saw that Donald Trump did govern in a way that made his businesses money. And there were many gov government officials, Saudis and whatnot, that would stay at his hotels to give him a profit. They knew that that would butter up the president. So, I mean, Joe Manchin is doing the same thing here. It, 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 there's no difference, really. So, when you ask him about it, he gets really mad. It's a very touchy subject. So, maybe more reporters should actually do their job and question this corrupt asshole about this conflict of interest. Why he's refusing to place his businesses in a blind trust and actually give up control of his businesses. Because it's interesting. He still does the bidding for the fossil fuel industry. So maybe there's this connection there. Maybe that conflict of interest is influencing his decisions. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. So anyways, he basically came out against the $3.5 trillion price tag. He still is refusing to state specifically what he'd cut. If it's universal pre-K, childcare, uh, expanding healthcare, he won't say. But he's against it because... Um, Spending money is bad, according to this Republican. He writes, every member of Congress has a solemn duty to vote for what they believe is best for the country and the American people, not their party. Respectfully, as I have said for months, I can't support 3.5 trillion more in spending when we already have spent 5.4 trillion since last March. At some point, all of us, regardless of party, must ask the simple question, how much is enough? Now, I just want to pause there because when Biden was coming up with infrastructure before Biden even named uh, a price, Joe Manchin said we should spend $4 trillion, but all of a sudden he's reversing what he said previously, probably because he got a phone call from his donor saying, mm, let's rein it in a little bit. So they're not spending that much on infrastructure itself, but on reconciliation, they can invest in infrastructure. And all of a sudden, when he sees that a lot of this money is going to benefit normal Americans, he's against it. Because in his view, that money should be benefiting his corporate donors special interests. And that, that's what this is about. This is him tacitly admitting that. He's not going to say that directly, but that is what it's about. Let's be clear. But he continues, what I've made clear to the president and democratic leaders is that spending trillions more on new and expanded government programs when we can't even pay for the essential social programs like social security and Medicare, that's a lie, is the definition of fiscal insanity, suggesting that spending trillions more will not have an impact on inflation ignores the everyday reality that America's families continue to pay an unavoidable inflation tax. Oh, give me a break. Proposing a historic expansion of social programs while ignoring the fact we are not in a recession and that millions of jobs remain open will only feed a dysfunction that could weaken our economic recovery. This is the shared reality we all now face, and it is this reality that must shape the future decisions decisions that we as elected leaders must make. So we'll pause again. Um, he's so concerned about working Americans. So concerned. Okay, so if you are arguing that this is going to lead to inflation, then what do you cut? 
be specific. What do you cut? Do you cut out the uh, benefits for uh, workers who are working during a pandemic, who are essential workers who get paid time off? Are you going to cut the expansion of Medicare that people desperately need? It's not a very vast expansion, but it would make a huge difference. Dropping the uh, age from 65 to 60 over years and expanding it to include uh, dental, hearing, and vision. What, what do you cut, Joe Manchin? If you care so much about working people, be very specific about what you think they should be denied. He won't say. Because there's always some sort of a fucking excuse. He's pathetic. Now, let's skip to the very, very end here. He says, If there is one final lesson that will continue to guide me in this difficult debate ahead, it is this. America is a great nation, but great nations throughout history have been weakened by careless spending and bad policies. Now more than ever, we must work together to avoid these fatal mistakes so that we may fulfill our greatest responsibility as elected leaders and pass on a better America to the next generation. He says, we must work together as he torpedoes his own party's agenda. And he says, I care about future generations. Meanwhile, you're not supporting this bill and you're effectively denying one small step towards arming ourselves to mitigate the effects of climate change. So you don't give a shit about future generations. If you did, you would fight climate change. You would stop uh, funding the fossil fuel industry, taking their donations, their bribes. I mean, he's truly insufferable, but okay, look, if this is where we're at, if we're at this point where both Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin are going to torpedo this, then okay, progressives go nuclear, vote down the infrastructure bill. They have enough votes, about two dozen uh, House lawmakers, to torpedo everything. So if they're not going to play ball, sink it all. Fuck it. If they don't get what they want, then Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema don't get what they want, which was a really nice corporate giveaway in that bipartisan infrastructure uh, proposal. And Joe Biden, I mean, if he's okay with nothing happening, just getting nothing, then um, I guess that's fine. But this is going to be his legacy. He has an opportunity to use his bully pulpit to actually exert influence over Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin. And he's done next to nothing. I mean, he had a, a meeting with Kirsten Sinema and he's barely saying anything publicly he's he's not calling out members of his own party that are obstructing his agenda so okay i mean joe joe biden is also to blame here as well it's not just kirsten Sinema and joe manchin he knows that he's the president he has a lot of uh, authority and influence and he could make a difference but he's choosing not to so if this all goes up in flames so be it but progressives have to vote down that infrastructure deal it's just not good enough there's like barely anything in there there's some provisions in there that are good i think that you know expanding infrastructure roads bridges uh, replacing some lead pipes is important but ultimately that is a giveaway to corporations and the real prize for the left is in that reconciliation package so if they don't get that you don't get what you want what your donors are pushing you to pass so you know it's sad but um you know if joe biden wants this He's got to fight for it. It's not going to be uh, rested on the shoulders of progressives. They shouldn't get the blame for this. There's two people who are the lowest common denominator who are uh, obstructing everything that the party wants. Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. It's them, not progressives, because progressives were willing to support their agenda. The bipartisan infrastructure deal, the only stipulation was you support the reconciliation package. They're saying no, so progressives have to hold the line and say no and vote that down as well. Fuck it.